and loss of thinking capacity in ayurvedic way this is more the most dangerous disadvantage of conventional medicine or integrated approach so we start losing our own <coughs> capacity to think in ayurvedic way we get start getting carried away by conventional <coughs> medicine and that was what seen in the meeting that's okay <coughs> that everybody was saying trying to say we'll try to find out a molecule that will be working on uh, this we'll work on cell lines we'll you know go for in vitro study etc etc so this is all humbug really speaking so <coughs> we need to think of this in ayurvedic perspective and then we have better future and we can guide the globe as such <coughs> so if we go for only ayurvedic approach this is ideal approach suitable for ayurvedic diagnosis so anyway for ayurvedic treatment we need to have ayurvedic diagnosis i am going to emphasize this point once again because there are many conditions wherein people have allopathic diagnosis in their mind and just have direct ayurvedic treatment without ayurvedic diagnosis so this is not fair so we need to have our own diagnosis in ayurveda whether it might be a pinpoint diagnosis of a particular disease or it might be just bausha dushya agni avastha etc etc let it be that there is no uh, doubt about that dushan desham balam kalam that can be our, our diagnosis that that's fine but we need to have our own diagnosis and then <coughs> we go for treatment lakshan kosha and hetu kosha can be extensively used for this purpose and hence now little easier i don't know how many of you know about this triskanda kosh project raise your hands 1 2 3 so there are rarely any people anyway so <coughs> we have been working extensively on triskanda kosh project and uh, we worked for 19 years in pune tilak maharashtra university basic theme was from vaidya kolatkar sir hetulinga ushad gnanam swastha tura pranayam trisutram shashvatam bundyam pupudaye punyam bubudhayam pitamaha this is stanza from charak samhita first chapter so based on this <coughs> he started compiling references from charak sushruta ashtang sangra and ashtang ruta so brotre but even uh, ashtanga sangra was also selected and uh, hetulinga shada skanda treya matra nibandana that is what ashtanga sangra says so there is nothing beyond triskanda in ayurveda only thing is the way in which the texts are given, uh, written and the way in which uh, <coughs> this triskanda is uh, <coughs> proposed there is quite a mismatch and uh, if we try to understand the triskandhas from the original text it's a tough job so what we have to do right from the beginning till the end of the <coughs> text you have to keep on reading and try to find out the causative factors of all entities from the kosha from the uh, text the signs and symptoms of all entities from the text the treatments of all the uh, things from the text and this is a huge job <coughs> and particularly for md scholars phd scholars this is a requirement somebody is working on some disease and some medicine or something like that. he is supposed to gather all information about that disease about that medicine etc <coughs> from the text and even if he is very honest and he is doing hard work he can miss few references that is quite possible so <coughs> if this work is done in one stroke that will be beneficial for all ayurvedic graduates post graduates practitioners teachers writers etc etc that was the basic theme behind this <coughs> so what we did we used to read every sutra from the text understand the meaning then split every word now sanskrit uh, language due to that there are sandhis and samasa so we have to split the words we have to see what is the samasa or something like that and then each word has to be fed into the computer <coughs> with a in a specific field 
with a specific objective. So, our objective was to know about the Hetu, Lakshana and Aushadha of Roga and Arogya. So, Roga and Arogya were the Neya to be known entities and Hetu, Linga and Aushadha were this, this were the knowledges, Jnana associated with that. So, you have to identify which Sutra it is. So, if this is the sutra or something like that. Then Ativyayama is the causative factor and Trishnakshaya, Pratamka, etc. are the karyas, the effects. Or in this particular scenario, these are diseases as well. So what we would used to do, we <coughs> had a Prathama Shashti syntax. So Neya is to be put in Shashti Vibhakti. So Trishnayaha, Pratamakasya, Kasasya like that. And the the Hetu or the Lakshana or the Aushada to be put in Prathama Vibhakti. So here in Vyayama Adhika Trishnaya, Kshayasya like that. In Lakshana Kosha or something like that, Agamapagamaksha Bumrututa Vedana Shmanam Vaishyamam Tatra Tatra Angya Tasta Shtur Vedana Shtala, this is Vata Jajvara or something like that. So Vata Jajvara is the entity to be known and then this Agamapagamaksha Bumrututa Vedanoshmana or something like that. <coughs> Vaishamya. So Vaishamya is the Lakshana or something like that. Agamasya Vaishamyam, Apagamasya Vaishamyam like that. So like that the Lakshana has to be fed in this particular way. And in Aushada Kosha, say Langanam Sodhana Kalo Yavagastikta Korasaha. Then this is Jvara or something. This Jvara is the Jvarasya, Langanam Sodhanam Kalaha. This, these are the <coughs> entities of the Aushada as such. So what happens when you cover the whole text right from to Sutrasthana to Siddhisthana, Uttarasthana, whatever it may be and uh, cover every Sutra from the original text, then all information is gathered in one store. And now actually we created three databases, <coughs> uh, one of Hetu Kosha, one of Lakshana Kosha and one of Aushada Kosha. Actually, it should be better to do only one database. Now, I am working in advanced version of this. I am doing Pratipadika Kosha now. <coughs> and there is only one, one database in Pratipadika Kosha. But in this scenario, <coughs> the uh, Roga or Arogya, which is in Shashti Vibhakti, becomes a keyword for us. And when we gather information about that from Hetu Kosha, we know all positive factors of that entity. When we uh, cover it from Lakshana Kosha, then we know all signs and symptoms of the disease. And when we uh, <coughs> cover all the references from Abhishadha Kosha, when, then we come to know about all medicines <coughs> that are being used, whether it is Panchakarma or anything like that. So I just uh, say one example, this is not cancer, this is uh, different. <coughs> so, so <coughs> Actually, uh, my guru Vaidya Fansalkar had one case of Arsha by Yarsha. <coughs> I was in third year and I examined the patient, I examined the Arsha. Then the main medicine that was given by him was Sura Suchika. And after about a month, I found that the Arsha has disappeared, vanished. <coughs> I could not understand the logic behind using Suvarna Sutshakar in Arsha. So I asked him uh, what is the reason behind this. Then he opened up Uttarasthana of Vagbata <coughs> and uh, showed me a reference wherein <coughs> Garabisha causes Arsha. <coughs> no, this is in Uttarasthana and if we are reading only in Arsha Nidana, we will not find this reference or something like that. Still I was puzzled, I said okay, the Arsha is being caused by Garavisha as well. But what is the role of uh, Suvarna Sutshakar in this? And we went back to Sutrasthan 7 chapter. Vishabhuktaya Dabdabja Suddham Tamra Rajam and then Shuddhairati Tathashanam Hema Churna Siddhapet Dasajate Hema Pange Padma Patani Bhavad Visham. So Tamra and Suvarna to be used <coughs> in Visha or something like that. And then Garek Pesha Vidhi Smrita, the, this Vidhi is even useful for Garavisha. And Viruddhamma Pesha Aharam Vidya Garavisha Upamam. <coughs> so Viruddhahara is also Garavisha Upamam. 
and then I had a link that he had Viruddha Ahara which was to be treated as like a Garavisha and Tamra Suvarna was to be used and then he on practical level he used Suvarna Suchaka and that subsided the Arsha or something like that. So unless and until you have a vast knowledge about the text you know where what is or something like that. It is very difficult to bring all these references together. Kosha has this, done this work perfectly. This is computerized, so there is no mistake in that. This reference will also you will find in Arsha or something like that. There is Tattadiloha uh, in Tandurogadhyaya uh, and it says Visheshadhanta Pasmaran Kamalang Bhutajanisha. So in Arsha you are not going to find Tattadiloha, which is mentioned in uh, this Pandurogadhyaya. In Apasmara or this Unmada, you won't uh, find Tapteri Loha, that is in Pandurogadhyaya. But it says over that it is Visheshadanti Apasmara and Kamala and Gudajanisha. So Apasmara and Gudaj are being treated with Tapteri Loha mentioned in uh, Pandurogadhyaya or something like that. All these references are brought together <coughs> in this uh, Triskanda Kosha as such. When we look at a disease and try to see the signs and symptoms etc., then you have varieties of symptoms. Puro Rupa, Rupa, Rishta Lakshana, Asadya Lakshana, Yapya Lakshana, Pratyatma Lakshana, there are varieties of symptoms associated or some Lakshanas mentioned in Samprapti particularly or something like that. So whatever entity you say, any disease that is all covered, but even Prakriti and other concepts are also Vaidya Lakshana, Rugna Lakshana, Meshaga Lakshana, etc., etc. All these are also <coughs> covered in this Triskanda Kosha. And we have varieties of appendices associated with it. So we have Lakshana Sabbadha Shari Radhi Bhavaha. Say, if we consider Rudaya as a Shari Radhi Bhava, Rudaya Arti, Rudaya Vedana, Rudaya Pida, Rudaya Ruja, or something like that, are varieties of symptoms associated with Rudaya. So you get alphabetical listing of uh, all Sharir Bhavas and uh, symptoms associated with that and there is a cross referencing that you can serve that symptom in Lakshan, uh, Lakshan Kosha first volume, page number, line number, column specific and uh, then you will find that Ruja Rudhaye, this is the Lakshan in Lakshan Kosha and then you will find this Sandarbha for that, so from where it has been cited. Now in Pratipatika Kosha we are trying to give the original text as well. Here we are only providing the uh, reference from the text but in Pratipatika Kosha we are going to append the text as well to that. So you will see the reference directly stanza along with the commentary. Wherever the commentary is available we will give commentary as well. So anyway <coughs> this is a huge work in uh, field of Ayurveda, Triskanda Kosha and we worked for it for 19 years from 1989 to 2008. Now the Lakshana Kosha is 3200 pages in three volumes, Lakshan Laksha Kosha, Laksha Lakshan Kosha and appendices. Hitu Kosha is also in three volumes 3200 pages, Hitu Karya Kosha, Karya Hitu Kosha and appendices. Now this is very important because cause effect relationship is the base of any science. And this cause effect relationship has been explored exclusively in the Hetu Kosha. You will find all sorts of causes and all sorts of effects or something. That is what Charkacharya says in Nidansthan 8th chapter. Ningam Chaikam Anekasya that is also said about uh, the Ekashanti Ranekasya that is also said in the same chapter. So like that there are relationships from one to many, one to one, many to one, many to many. All these relationships are explored in this uh, Triskanda Kosha project. So Lakshan Kosha is also three volumes and Aushada Kosha is seven volumes, 8000 pages. That is huge. And we adopted a totally different classification for Aushada Kosha. <coughs> so what I tried to do what has been said in this sutra that is to be understood. <coughs> so the sutra says that Vamana with this this thing to be done, Badana Faladi or something like that is to be given. Then to be given is Vamana. 
and this is associated part, Vadanadi yoga is associated part. There might be some oil to be given or something like that and that can be used in Basti, Nasya, Abhyanga or something like that. So main thing is that tailor and uh, this becomes subordinate, what is, uh, in what way it is to be used or something like that. So we started with the classification of karma and karmetara, this is totally different classification of my thought process, nowhere else or something like that. And in karma, pancha karma, kan pancha karmetara karma and dravya karma, these were the classifications. So pancha karma will only include woman virachan, uh, shodhana nasya or uh, asthapana basti etc. <coughs> Panchakarmetara karma will have anjana, ashchotana, tarpana, puttapaka, etc. all other things. <coughs> and aushadha karma or dravya karma is so pachvan, shaman, uh, bruhan or these kinds of things etc. etc. And in karmetara it is guna or dravya. So, shita sarva vidhirita. This is guna chikitsa kind of thing. And uh, a particular dravya to be given or a sanyoga to be given. And in that yoga, again, <coughs> there will be varieties of things. So, make a decoction of this, then uh, put this into that or something like that. <coughs> so, all this we try to <coughs> simplify the procedure or something like that. etc. If this is the Chavan Prasha or something, <coughs> then the decoction of this to be made, Amala to be cooked into that, then that is to be separated and uh, we have to make version in Taila and Gruta and then uh, prepare path of that Kamatha etc etc. So in this way <coughs> that has been split in that particular way. So single yoga and then Kalpana, which Kalpana to be used even in a complex Aushadi yoga there are varieties of Kalpanas together. Ultimately it is Avaleha, but before that it is uh, something like this Chura, something like this Kvatha or something or cooking. So all those Kalpanas to be incorporated into that <coughs> and thus in Aushadha Kosha we can find a single medicine, maybe Guduchi, Shatavari, Bala, Rasna, Ashwagandha, whatever it may be or something like that. Now there are varieties of synonyms. Guduchi may not be mentioned only by Guduchi, it will be Amruta, it may be Chinnaruha, Chinnabhava and there are so many or something like that. So all that has to be taken care <coughs> and you can find it from any synonyms as such, <coughs> Pariyayanama. And whether it is used singly or it is in yoga, so you can find the yogas which contain Guduchi by any synonym and you can find the contents of the yoga as a separate entity. So if it is Chavantrak then Dashabhula or Alvarna Rasna will be the contents. Dashabhula again you will have Bilvagni Mathur, Vanakar, Patalatun, Tukair Math etc. So all these contents will be there. <coughs> so like that <coughs> Aushadha Kosha is really extensive. So, so 8000 pages in 7 volumes. And not only that, we developed Ayata Nidana, a diagnostic software based on this. <coughs> Actually the first version of diagnostic software was uh, done by Vaidya Vilas Nalar. He worked on Madhav package. <coughs> but he has taken only 4000 records. And that was based only on symptoms. Our diagnosis software is based on Nidana Panchaka. So Nidana Pururu, Proof, Upasha and Samprapti all are covered. 85,000 records from Lakshana Kosha and 85,000 records from Hetu Kosha were incorporated in this diagnosis software Ayuta Nidana. <coughs> Unfortunately, there was much politics and I had to leave University Tilak Maharashtra University after completion of the project and uh, now everything is with TMB and it is not doing anything. So this software is not available in the market right now. <coughs> Ayuta Upachara is uh, treatment software and wherein uh, we can search a particular symptom, a particular disease and try to find out all varieties of medicines whether it is panchakarma, panchakarma, either karma, yogas and single drugs, any everything is possible. Uh, this Ayuta Nidana was a tough job and uh, <coughs> to our satisfaction we could do it to a very good extent. Now I am thinking of this Pratipati Kukosha and developing separate diagnostic treatment software on Pratipati Kukosha as well. So this will be coming in future. 
and uh, that will have a more broad base <coughs> than uh, only these four texts or something. So anyway, <coughs> what we have to do is this Triskanda Kosha is a really very effective tool to understand a particular entity. <laughs> I have written one article about this understanding Ayurveda that was published in this Journal of Ayurveda and Integrative Medicine from Bangalore, <coughs> FRLHD. And I try to emphasize that the approach in which we try to understand the text, reading the text as such and focused approach by identifying a particular entity. Say for example, we want to see study Agni Mandya from our text. Now the references of Agni Mandya <coughs> are scattered right from Sutra Sthana to Chikitsa Sthana or Uttara Sthana, Siddhi Sthana etc. So, Tayyabhavat Vishnu Mastikshno Mandashtangli Samai Sama, this is from first chapter. Then Vishnu Mastikshno uh, Samayak Aptyashu Samayak Vapi Chirat Pachit, this is in Shari Rasthana. Then <coughs> Sneha Meva Param Vidya Dobaranala Deeparam, this is in Grani Chikitsa. So, Ati Sneha Tu Mandegna, Ati Raksha Tu Mandegna, Udhavarta Tu Mandegna, all sorts of Angri Mandek treatments are given in Grani Chikitsa or something like that. Then there are varieties of other diseases, Arsha and Udara, etc., wherein Agni Mandya is uh, one of the important culprits. So, all the references of Agni Mandya are scattered right from Sutra Sthana to Chikitsa Sthana, Siddhi Sthana, Uttar Sthana, like that. And Kosha brings all these records together. <coughs> so, whatever the positive factors, whatever the treatments of Agni Mandya, whatever the symptoms of Agni Mandya, etc., etc. <coughs> they will be gathered together. So, this is a focused approach and for any MD scholar, any PhD scholar, this is a really boon. Kodakar's son Vedas was working on effects of air conditioning <coughs> and uh, he had a ready references from Hitu Kosha, Shitam Druham, Shitam Agaram and uh, Shita Sevanam, these are found directly in the Hitu Kosha or something like that. We have whatever information about any food material that is available in the text, given in the text that we can easily get from this. So, all positive factors, all signs and symptoms, all treatments are <coughs> collected in this Riskanda Kosha and that is really a boon for uh, all uh, uh, PG students. Unfortunately, this knowledge has not at all been spread in India. We were struggling hard to complete the project. We had uh, positive of funds and we had to struggle a lot to get funds and uh, keep the project going. And we could not uh, emphasize on spreading the knowledge, etc., etc., that we are doing this, etc., etc. Anyway, <coughs> uh, the koshas are also, the printed versions are also uh, in the students of Kulak Karsar and some of us. So, I have koshas in my home. I do not think there is any uh, copy of that in here in this library, we do not have, okay. So that is the scenario, only this Udupi college is having due to Murilar Sharma. <laughs> he purchased it on his own and he asks his student to look into the kosha or something like that. <coughs> anyway, so <coughs> with this, it is uh, bit easier now to think of any disease, not only cancer, but think of any disease and uh, that is also one of the thing. So, this was the publication of Lakshana Kosha at the hands of Murli Manohar Joshi and uh, Shankaraji Savan was our the then chancellor. Dr. Marshall Kerr is also Dr. Iyengar is also there. They both received delete in this function. And I was felicitated at the hands of Bhairav Singh Shekhawat, the vice president of India. Sushma Swaraj and Murli Manohar Joshi were also there. This was the release of Ayutha Nidana, the diagnostic software at the ends of Shivaraj Patil and Arjun Singh in Delhi. Then this was the release of Aushada Kosha <coughs> at the hands of, uh, this was Vilasava uh, Deshmukh, <coughs> the Chief Minister of Maharashtra and I was felicitated at its hands. Hitu Kosha was published at the hands of Sri Sharma, the President of CCIM. So, we turn back to our <laughs> original subject. So, disadvantages of uh, only Ayurvedic approach, lack of experience can lead to improper judgment regarding prognosis. 
Now, this is a major lacuna an oncologist sees 20, 35, 50 patients a day of only cancer. I am seeing maybe 3, 4 new cases and 5, 6 follow ups, so maybe 10 cases a day or something like that, not more than that of cancer. Now, the number is increasing every day. <coughs> but still, uh, compared to 30, 35 patients a day, 5, 10 patients a day is not a good number or something like that. So, we lack in experience that is uh, most important aspect over here and then uh, improper judgment in my regarding prognosis. I just quote one example, <coughs> there was one case of esophageal cancer and uh, they had given radiation and there was a radiation ulcer and there was an adivarana from the esophagus into the skin and whatever you put into the mouth <coughs> was oozing out from this. And I was treating and there was another oncologist who was also seeing the case. <coughs> now, this is long back story. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> the patient suddenly developed pneumonia and died in two, two days. And then it was revealed that this was due to this ulcer <coughs> and this nadi brada. And so, the liquid escaped into the lungs and that created pneumonia and the patient died of pneumonia. <coughs> So, this is lack of experience, not only of mine, but due to of, of that oncologist as well. We could have put a rice tube and that could have saved his life or something like that. But <coughs> these kinds of things can happen and unless and until you become experienced in that and try to think logically what might be possible in this scenario, then that would be appropriate or something like that. Difficult to explain to the modern world and not useful for finding out single anti-cancer drug. Now, this is the requirement so to say. Actually, we need to train Ayurvedic graduates for Ayurvedic diagnosis. <coughs> I have one online program for cancer, a teaching program, 24 or 25 lectures. <coughs> Every week you get two lectures online, you have to listen and uh <coughs> then prepare yourself or something like that. So, that is on gadgilayurveda.com, that is the website, I will be coming to that later. Basic concept is every good vaidya should start treating cancer patients. There is a fear about cancer in the minds of human vaidyas and uh, I do not have knowledge, I do not have experience, how can I treat or something like that. This fear has to be left <coughs> and what should start uh, practicing cancer as well or something like that. At least if we attack disease free stage people that should be fine. In the initial stage generally you do not get disease free patients, <laughs> you get only advanced patients. But if the concept is spread then at least we can get disease free stage patients and try to prohibit the recurrence of the disease that, that is also a good job. Basic thing is we should try to think about cancer in Ayurvedic perspective and uh, how to diagnose, how to treat, etc., etc. That uh, that is the thing. So it's difficult to explain to the modern world, and not useful for uh, finding a single drug. I'm not in favor of that at all. <coughs> finding a single drug. An appropriate approach. Now there is uh, another uh, <coughs> big issue of the investigations. In old days, people like me who are 60 plus or something. <coughs> we rely more on clinical diagnosis and less on investigations or something like that. The trend is exactly opposite now. The new doctors even do not examine the patients, <coughs> they do not touch the patient at all. They just see the reports and start writing prescription or something like that. This is really humble. Now, why this is happening? Because <laughs> there is a conception that the uh, various equipments and technologies have a super hand and we can know many, many minute things in the body which we are otherwise unable to see or unable to <coughs> understand. <coughs> and then <coughs> we may miss in diagnosis, we may have misconceptions or something like that.